How is everyone today? Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Jason Levine. Today we're going to be talking about, uh, this is part two of How to Make Good Videos Great, featuring uh, the Essential Graphics panel and building motion graphics templates in Premiere Pro. So let's go ahead and get to it. So we're going to start today in Premiere Pro, and today the focus again is going to be on building motion graphics templates directly here inside of Premiere Pro. Now, unlike what we did last week in After Effects, where we got very, well, uh, I was going to say very animated, but obviously you just have more flexibility, more options for animation, again, for using expressions and things, and really getting very detailed in how you build animated motion graphics. In Premiere, obviously, there are some more limitations. There are just fewer things that you can do natively, but that's actually to your advantage, and this is a great way to very quickly and easily build up Again, whether you're doing just simple title sequences or lower thirds, um, we even ship with a whole bunch of standard uh, templates and things for you, or I should say presets. And actually, if we just were to go into the, sorry, I hit my microphone there, Essential Graphics panel, you'll see that we've got um, a whole bunch of preset categories that ship with Premiere Pro already. So these are already accessible today, including some that were built specifically in After Effects. Those ones are obviously indicated here with AE. So, you know, if we just wanted to look at, say, lower thirds, we could select the lower thirds here. And this is just going to give you some of the various, uh, you know, free stock lower thirds that we ship within the app that you can kind of get using right away. And we'll take a look at some of these a little bit later. But I want to start with authoring them just to kind of show you how easy it is and to kind of inspire you to maybe start doing some of this. And uh, and at, towards the end, we'll go to Adobe Stock and just start downloading and licensing a bunch from our vast catalog, which includes many free motion graphics templates. So again, I've got a piece of footage. This is from a, a little uh, commercial that I've been working on for a friend of mine about an adult Alaskan adventure camp. And maybe we'll start by making kind of a very simple sort of title, all right? Just name and maybe some kind of colored bar and uh, a role, something like that. You know, something that you'd see at the beginning credits, the beginning of a, of a show. And this is a cool piece of footage here. This is actually also footage that I acquired from Adobe Stock, so which I've licensed um, to my CC library. So how do we begin this? Well, it's very simple. And the cool thing is that with the introduction of the Essential Graphics panel, we also finally introduced a proper text tool where you can do both horizontal and vertical text. Now, your UI may look a little bit different than mine. You can see at the, up at the top here, I'm actually using our graphics workspace. Um, just want to point out here again for all of you new to Premiere Pro and working with Essential Graphics that we've got all these various workspaces. Now, I have a lot of custom ones that you can see in here as well. Also, um, if you just simply want to add the Essential Graphics panel to a particular workspace, you can always find any of those panels in the window menu right here. Okay, So yours might look a little bit different than mine. Just keep that in mind. So down here in the Tools panel, here's where we've got our text tool. And as I mentioned, if you click on the Type tool, Standard, Horizontal Type, and Vertical Type as well. So I'll choose the Text tool, and let's just start by clicking right onto the, uh, onto the canvas here, right onto the video. And like I said, this will be some kind of like title sequence. So maybe this will be, um, we'll say, Associate Producer, okay? Now, couple things here. So inside of Essential Graphics, once we do that, what you're going to see is that it starts to build up a layer stack, okay? And you'll see as we add more and more of these, notice the familiar, you know, the Photoshop uh, eye, eye toggle here to turn the layer on and off. You're actually going to be building up layers. Notice this button here, new layer. So we're basically just stacking layers of text right onto the screen here, very simply. Kind of feels almost like Photoshop in a way. Now this responsive design stuff, um, we're really gonna talk more about this next week. We'll touch upon this later today. We're not gonna go there just yet. But for the moment, we're gonna look at a line and transform. So one of the things that I might wanna do, obviously, is do sort of a, a horizontal center here. We can do a vertical center as well. I kinda like where that is, so I'm gonna leave it there. And then you've got sort of all of your basic uh, controls here for position, anchor point, rotation, opacity of your text. All of these can be animated, which we're going to do in just a moment. Now again, master styles, we'll come back to this in a second once we build this up a bit more. Now under text, this is where I want to make uh, an, an essential point to you if you're creating motion graphics templates, whether you make them in Premiere or you make them on the After Effects side. But ultimately, if you plan on using these on different machines or maybe sharing these with others via a CC library, 
there's something that you should keep in mind. So when you click on the, uh, the text uh, drop down here, first of all, this is a new text menu that we have in this latest update, CC 2018. Um, if you've worked in Photoshop or Illustrator, this is going to look very familiar, right? So you now have all of your fonts with font preview. You have filtered abilities where you can filter by your favorites or type kit fonts. So much nicer. In the previous version, it was just a list of fonts, which was a drag. Um, and for someone like me who suffers from font anxiety, it's really essential for me to be able to see what it is that I'm typing before I select the font. Now, when you're building these, I would highly recommend, now granted, if you're never going to share these with anybody, you're only going to use them on one system, they're just for you, whatever, you can use any font you want. A good practice or something to keep in mind is that if you use Typekit fonts, now remember, as CC members, you have thousands and thousands of available fonts available to you, all licensed to you, which you can download and license directly via CC in the background. If you use Typekit fonts, then anyone that you share this template with will always be able to access your template and subsequently access the proper font, right? Nothing worse than getting a PSD or something from a client and that, you know, that in the past, that dreaded message of can't find font. Today, of course, if you use Typekit fonts, it'll automatically say, hey, you're missing this font. Do you want us to download it for you? It'll synchronize in the background and you're good to go. So I always use Typekit fonts when building these kind of elements. Even, frankly, I use them because I just happen to like a lot of the Typekit fonts for the stuff I do. But even outside of that, it's just kind of a good practice if you plan on leveraging these on another system, right? That's kind of the freedom of CC. I can go to my friend's edit studio, log in, everything in my library shows up, and then again, I can instantly synchronize fonts as I need them. So we could come in here and maybe we'll do something like Paralucent. I happen to really like this one. We'll do just a little bit thicker there. We'll do light, Again, I'll do a horizontal alignment, okay? And then we've got our colors here and we can leave it white uh, for now. We can do a stroke and a shadow, all that kind of stuff, okay. So there's our basic text. Now we're gonna go to a new layer here. And here's where we have the option now to uh, maybe add something like a shape. I'm gonna add just a little divider bar in there, okay? Now you'll see here that you've got rectangle and ellipse. Now, of course, those are not the only shapes available to you. If you go back over to our little tools panel here, you can also use the pen tool to allow you to do any kind of freeform shape. So if I wanted to do that, I could simply take the pen tool and I could start clicking some points and, you know, doing whatever. That's about as good as my freeform drawing is going to get, which is why I seldom use that, okay? But the point is you can. And then, of course, you can bezier those and make all different types of rounded shapes, etc. We won't worry about that for now. I'm simply going to come over here and choose the rectangle. First of all, let's change that fill color because I know it's freaking the stream out. It does not like that color blue. I mean that color uh, red. And let's go ahead and take this and simply drag it out. And once again, we'll do our horizontal alignment. And then uh, something that was added in the June update to CC, to Premiere Pro. Um, again, kind of following in the steps of Photoshop. If you want to, say, move this up or down, but you don't want to be able to shift it left or right, you can now constrain those movements by holding down the Shift key. So hold down Shift and drag this up and notice I can never move it left or right. I'm, res I'm restricting it only up or down. So kind of nice to have that again, familiar from Photoshop and Illustrator and everywhere else. All right, so maybe we'll just drag this out a little bit more. Kind of fit it a little bit better and I'll redo a horizontal line, something like that, okay? Real simple, clean, easy. Now we'll do another text layer. Let's go ahead and grab our text tool. And uh, for the role of associate producer, I'll use myself. So again, I can do horizontal alignment here. Maybe I change the color a little bit. Maybe we make it, you know, slightly, slightly more earthy, a little less white. Just, just, just cause, you know, my, my design abilities. Oh, let me select the text. That would help. My design abilities, uh, you know, are fairly limited. So, you know, I don't, I don't like to go too crazy with color and things because I tend to make bad choices. <laughs> this is why motion graphics templates are so, so essential for me because I let my designer friends do all the hard work. They can choose the font. They can do everything. And then all I have to do is just edit them. Okay. 
So there's that. And uh, if we wanted, again, you know, maybe we change the, the style for this. Maybe this is light. Or maybe this is bold. We make the top line light. Whatever. Again, I'm, I'm a terrible designer. So I'm not going to worry so much about making this look how it should. Because I'm just, that's not where my skills lie. This is why you should collaborate with others to have them make them for you too. If you're design challenged like I am. We're going to add a little bit of a drop shadow here. Just kind of offset that because I made it kind of that beige-ish color. A little bit of blur just to make that pop a little bit more. And that looks, that looks okay. All right. So now we have the basis of a motion graphics template. Now, obviously, we can just fly this on static as it is. But ultimately, we probably want to do a little bit of animation on this. So here's where using motion graphics templates in Premiere will be very familiar to any Premiere editor because how do you do animation? You do it inside the effects panel just like you would animate anything. So if we go ahead and select our motion graphics template under effects controls, here now you will see all of our various layers, our text, associate producer, our shape, our blue line, and the second line of text. And then you have all of the same parameters that you see inside essential graphics available to you right here. So this makes it really easy to, again, make modifications here. But additionally, this is also where you can perform all the animation that you need to do, all right, right here. So perhaps we'll um, just do a very simple opacity on, uh, you know, on these three sort of elements, all right? So maybe we'll have, we want associate producer, we want it to be sort of at full, full opacity right here. So I'll twirl down associate producer, let's go to opacity, let's set a keyframe right there. Let's wind back and let's just go ahead and drop the opacity on that. So it just kind of, again, shifts opacity over time. All right, and maybe we'll make that even a little bit longer just to let it breathe in a little bit more, okay? And we can do the same kind of thing on the shape. So same thing here. So maybe the shape comes in a little bit later. All right, so we'll do another opacity. And by the way, it can be anything. I'm just using opacity because it's simple and clean. All right, we'll have this one maybe start at the same time, but it just takes a little bit longer to get there. And then for my name, because this is kind of a nice long clip, let's extend this out and we'll do the same thing here. So I'm just going to twirl this down, set an opacity keyframe here. And as that bar is just about up, maybe that's where we'll have my name start to fly in. Okay. So here we go. Play it back. Okay. Real simple, real easy, real clean. Does it look brilliant? Perhaps not. In fact, I think it need I my name it needs to take a it needs to come in a little bit later and take a little bit longer. So we're gonna move those keyframes out. Let's select both of these, move them out, and I'm gonna drag this one out here. And I can even do a little ease in on that, and maybe we'll make that auto bezier, just so it's a little bit smoother. Okay. I'll select this keyframe too. Should be at zero. Nice. All right. And with the kind of moving shot, that works for me. Okay. Now, talking about blur and effects. Again, now you can add effects to these layers um, just as you would anything else in Premiere. So let me go ahead and pull up my effects panel up here. And let's go into our blurs. And I tend to like using things like directional blur on text and stuff like this. So I'm simply going to take directional blur, drag it down over to the clip right over here. Let's go back into our effects controls. And once again, maybe we'll have sort of, this is where the blur will kind of end right here, blur length. But maybe we'll have it kind of in a blur state the whole time. something like that, all right? Just by adjusting blur length. We could adjust the direction too, okay? It just kind of moves 
nicely with the motion. Okay, so now I've got animation, we've got stuff flying in, we've got directional blur, all done inside the effects controls panel. Real simple, real easy. Now, as I'm building this up, there are certain elements of this that A, I may wanna reuse, and I will very likely, because again, this template, I'm gonna reuse this a couple times, right? Associate producer, and then we've got, you know, um, the uh, producer, and then the executive producer, and then the director, and all these other roles. So we're gonna wanna reuse this. That's the idea behind a template in general, right? To be able to reuse these things over time. So let's go ahead and kind of finish this out. Now, I don't need this to be necessarily 10 seconds. All right, so we're gonna take this and we're simply going to, here again, we can do like another blur keyframe. Let's do like a 0.1 right here. All right. And I'm gonna increase the blur significantly. And as it's doing that, I'm also going to come over to here. Let's back up. Right about there. And on each of these, I'm gonna set, again, another opacity change. Set a keyframe. Set a keyframe on this, on the shape. And you can guess what I'm doing here. I'm, we're basically gonna just have everything you know, fade out entirely. And you'll see why in just a second. Because again, these are becoming elements that we're going to be able to reuse, all right? 99 on that. And then let's just move to the end of the blur here. And zero opacity on that. And zero opacity on that. And zero opacity on that, all right? So here we go, uh, stays, and then, okay? Simple, template. Now, we're not done yet, because I mentioned, not only do I want the animation to be consistent in the template, but I also wanna be able to use this style, this amazing, <laughs> amazing style that I've created. Specifically, like, I want the name text to always be with that fill, with the drop shadow, in extra light, okay, using Paralucent. So here's now, by layer, where we can create master styles. So let's go ahead and create a new master text style. And we'll call this uh, show intro second line. Or we'll call this just show second line. All right. Try to keep it somewhat short, okay? So again, I can take this now and Let's go ahead and, and, and leverage a couple of these. And I'm going to, in the meantime, I'm gonna drag this out and duplicate this too, just to give us a little more time on this, uh, on this content. I'm holding down the Alt or Option key and just dragging in another instance of this. Okay, so first and foremost, we need to turn this into a template. So how do we do that? Well, just like in After Effects, we, name, we need to export this as a motion graphics template. You can do this up at the top here via the graphics menu or you can simply right click here and choose to export as motion graphics template. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Asks us to give it a name. So we'll just call this uh, show title to color, okay? Now, where you save it is important. As I mentioned before, if you save it to a CC library, and you can see I've got a bunch of libraries here and some shared libraries, that's going to allow you to leverage this on any system that you log into. So that's kind of what you want, right? You wanna have access to this all the time. That is sort of the mantra of CC. Always have access to your colors, to your brushes, to your motion graphics templates. Now you can save it locally to your essential graphics panel, but that's only going to be on the installation where you're sitting when you built it, all right? Same for After Effects. So. I almost never save it to the Essential Graphics panel because anything that I stick there, if I go and do a show or go to Max or something, I'm not gonna have those anymore. So it behooves me to put it in a library, whether it's my own library or shared with someone else. If I put it to a shared library, like this one here, so I've got this one J and B, this is between me and my friend Bronwyn. Right now, if she's in Premiere or whenever she logs in, she would have access to this template, just like that. 
The other thing, of course, is that if you just save it to a local drive, that's going to create the dot M-O-G-R-T. And you've probably heard us refer to these as Mogurts motion graphics templates. So this allows you now to share the Mogurt externally. So, you're, you know, some for whatever reason, you didn't want to put it in the library, you want to throw them all in a Dropbox, or maybe just for yourself to have a backup if you want. You can save them locally as well. I'm going to save it to Jason's library. This is where I put all my stuff, and I'll click OK on that, all right? And what that's going to allow me to do, of course, is now if I go up to libraries and I scroll down to my motion graphics templates, and there it is, already synchronized. Show title to color right here. And you can see when I do that, it pulls up a little uh, tool tip, shows me the title, it's created in Premiere, it's five seconds, and it's 11K in size. Back to this now, again, we want to reuse this template. So I can take the template and I can drag it in here, okay? And I can also just hold down my option key again, and just like with the video, I can drag in another instance of that, okay? Now what this is now going to, of course, let me do is modify elements. So in this case, let's go ahead and modify this text here. Oh, my typing is all over the place today. All right, I'll redo my horizontal center. We'll come over to this. All right, select the name text. All right, audience participation, that's what this is. <laughs> All right, and note that the animation, everything is retained, right? That's the key. Everything is retained in the template. You don't have to redo it, right? Come back over here, select it again, and this will be, uh, And that'll go to someone else here. Okay, all right. So now as we play this back, we have our stuff flying on, okay. Flies off, again, here we go. Flies on, blurs on, flies off. And then once again, same exact thing, flies on flies off, okay? Real simple, really, really easy. Now, there's a couple things we might wanna do at this point. Now, one of the options that you may have seen here is when I select this, is that we have the option here to upgrade this to a master graphic. What that will do is that, first of all, that's gonna place it inside of your project panel here. Um, and much like uh, when we talk about, if you've ever worked with any of our um, color controls, uh, Lumetri Color. And since introducing Lumetri and borrowing some uh, techniques and things from uh, speed grade, you know, we have the concept of a, of a master clip and then a sub clip. Well, similarly, when you create that master graphic, it too has certain master elements available to you. And you may have noticed on your effects controls that you have this similar thing going on up here where you have the master graphic and then you have options for you know for modifying certain things there and then you have sort of the instance of the graphic so again what this allows you to do is to add certain functions elements to the master but you still have separate editability on the clip instance okay which is very very useful now when we were talking before about the master text styles, all right? So let's go in here. So as I'm playing this back, now I'm looking at this, I'm going, you know, I don't, I don't know if I love that beige or maybe, maybe both of them need to be beige. Like, I'm not sure, you know, but maybe, maybe that should be white. It just, it's not really, it's not popping enough for me. So I wanna change it to white, maybe not full white, but just something like it, all right? So let's go back over to this. And we'll, we'll select our text here. I'll come up to the fill color, and I'm just going to drag this over. Again, not, not full 255, 255, but we'll do something like this. 
I want it to be obvious enough so you see it change, okay? All right, so now it's changed. Now, when I changed that, take a look here. I notice it says master styles modified, okay? So what that's telling us now is that the style that we had created has now been changed. So we can do one of two things. We can either sync back to the original master style, which will put us back into that beige color, or we can push this change to the existing master style and modify it. And what that will do, let's go ahead and do that, is that now every instance of where this appears, whoops, I don't want to do that, of where this appears, all right, so long as we have the master style selected, you see that they are white. Now let's go back here again. And let's say, okay, nah, you know what? I think I did like it beige. So we'll go back into the fill color here. Drag it like this. Maybe we'll make it even more like orange, okay? Perfect. And I like that. And it's been modified. Let's push it to the master style. Okay. So now when I play this back, remember we changed everything to white. Jason Levine is in the beige. Let's get over to Greg here. Greg is in beige. Okay. And speed up a little. And Victor is in beige. Okay. Master styles. So why is this so essential? Because again, if you build that into the template, and then somewhere along the line, you decide, ah, oh, you know what? I want all the text to be with a fill and with a stroke and with a shadow and with a blah, blah, blah. And in this font, you know, all of those elements, all the text properties here can be changed. Um, it will change and cascade through any instance where that's used. Pretty simple. So the master styles are very, very useful for, again, maintaining that consistency. But also, if you need to make a change, you don't have to go back through every instance and manually change the color. As long as they're assigned that master style, you're good to go. That's kind of just the basic idea of building um, these templates directly in Premiere. Now, a couple other things I wanna point out. As I mentioned before, of course, you've got the ability to add text, and you can see our layer stack here. You can reorder these layers accordingly, obviously, if you want certain things to be on top of one another. You've got your shapes. You've got your pen tool for doing freeform shapes, but you can also import content from a file. Now, this includes the ability to import even video. So yes, you can import video here. Now, as Bronwyn mentioned, and we were mentioning earlier, um, if you want audio to be part of your templates, you wanna do that on the After Effects side. But here, what this also lets you do is import things like ping files. So just like in After Effects in episode one last week where we brought in a logo, we can do the same thing here. So let's go and I'll do from file. Uh, okay, I don't know what this is. I'm bringing in stuff randomly. Okay, that is not what we want, but that's that's okay. I can I can make do with this as it is. So first and foremost, let's go ahead and uh, adjust the opacity on that. All right. And then of course, scale this way down. I was looking for my ping with transparency, but that's okay. It doesn't need to be. And we could stick this, you know, in the bottom. And this is where I tend to uh, turn on things like my title safe, action safe, just so I know where this is going. If I put it right about, right about there, okay? So this is just, I'm just showing you here. We can turn those off, by the way. Um, importing ping, importing JPEG. Again, if we wanted some video layered over top of this, we could do that as well. Keep in mind, as I was saying, that we can adjust our opacity. This too, of course, can be um, can be uh, animated over time. Now, this is only on this instance. We didn't save this to the motion graphics template, but if we wanted to create the template with that logo, it's as simple as exporting the template again, okay? So bringing in video, bringing in ping files, bringing in JPEGs, um, all of that can be done. And again, you see how we're building up this layer stack right here. Easy, consistent, really, really useful. So now what we're gonna do is let's kind of take this and embellish these a little bit. 
um, by doing some kind of responsive things. So one of the first ones is responsive position, position pinning, and then I'll do time-based uh, responsive animation. So this is new in the latest update uh, of Premiere Pro CC 2018. And for this particular uh, graphic, maybe I want to have a little box around this, okay? Maybe I want it to be around everything. Maybe I only want it to be around uh, the name text here. Let's go ahead and make a new layer. Let's make a rectangle. So that's fine. All right. And we're going to place this around the text. Oops. Like that. By the way, you can rename these so they're not necessarily shape one, shape two. That's usually pretty helpful. Pin that to Jason Levine. Jason Levine, pin to the video frame. Shape one, pin to Jason Levine. Jason Levine, pin to the video frame. I'm just double checking to make sure these things are staying. And they are. Okay. Let's go ahead and export this again. Call this Jason 01111. Okay. Let's get rid of this. Go to libraries. Do you feel it? Do you feel positive? <laughs> All right. Let's hope so. Take my text. Type it in here. Aha. And now you can see the box grows, okay? Responsively, simply, easily. And again, I can take this so that the blur is affected there too. All right. And the box grows, okay? So responsive design, position, pinning. By the way, here, we can call this box. Okay, just rename that. I hate having just shape one, shape two. Again, we can go back to our text over here. And if we just go back into Jason Levine, all right, reposition, and we're good to go. Now, before Frank was asking about timing. So this is something else that's really important because what we actually want to do is we want, you know, maybe we always want the timing of that animation to exist in a specific duration or over a specific duration, which in this case, if I look at this, it's approximately, let's say like two seconds in one frame. So here now, if you just select the graphics template, you'll see we have something here called responsive design time, where you can set intro and outro durations. So I always wanna make sure that that sort of directional blur opacity thing happens over two seconds, yeah, and let's say 10 frames. And then the outro should happen, I think it's the same. Actually, that's a bit faster. Let's take a look here. So uh, 21, 12. Okay. So that should be like one, you know, one second, something like that. All right. So what happens is, take a look here, is that now inside of the essential graphics window here, any keyframes that exist in the gray areas here will always be preserved. They'll always preserve that time duration. And any keyframes that exist in this gray area always preserving that time duration. And any keyframed animation that exists between those sections will be squeezed or stretched. Now, why is this so cool? So here, I'm just going to, uh, let me just go full screen on this for a second. I'm just gonna move these out of position here to show you. Because this is one of those super time savers, right? Because traditionally in Premiere, if you animated a title like this, and then you said, ah, you know what? I need it to, I need to extend it. I need it to be longer. If you drag this out or, or change the duration, the keyframes don't follow, didn't follow it. So you'd, you'd have to move the keyframes and readjust and do all these things. But with responsive design time, now I can take this entire thing and let's say I drag it all the way to the beginning. Notice those gray areas, they're also on the clip itself. Those durations are always preserved. And now any animation that we could do that we might perform in the middle here, this will, this will be stretched out. So if we had additional animations there, it would just linger longer. But that fly on text intro duration always remains. And of course, if you set this and then export that as a template, that function is always there. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll call this show 
intro resp responsive. Okay, for responsive. Click OK. All right. So again, wind back. Okay. Again, it happens over that two seconds and 10 frames. So we might want to move some of those uh, keyframes out. And of course, they're all on different values here. So we could adjust those so that they're not right at the edge. You get the idea. Um, but the point is, it's always preserving those durations on or off. And now that we saved that as a template, go back to libraries, show intro responsive. Again, same thing here. If we shrink this up, notice again, these durations never change. They will shrink and stretch accordingly anything that's happening in the black area there in the middle. But as we extend these out, it's always responsive, respecting those durations. Again, make it super short. It's still going to be two seconds and 10 frames on the in and then a second on the out. Okay, now I should have gone to zero there so you didn't see those little lines. That's one of the one of the uh, things of directional blur that I don't love so much, but we could also do that by just fading out that bounding box a little sooner. Awesome. So responsive design time, responsive design positioning. Now I'll cover more of this and do a bit more on sort of how this works um, and get a little more complex with this next week. So now that we've got that, let's, um, let's kind of take a look again at some of the uh, preset ones that we have and talk about accessing some of the ones from, C uh, from Adobe Stock. All right, so let's let's take a look at some of these. Now, again, just to point out, I'm not going to go through all of them, um, some of the various options that you have here. So since we're just kind of doing credits here, I just want to pull in some of these. So let's do one of these, like, film credits. I don't remember what this one looks like exactly. Go ahead and drag this in. Hit play. And just real simple. I mean, it's it's just real nice and clean. Standard style with a nice little blur on. <laughs> film credit. All right. By the way, it didn't ask me for a font because I've dragged this one in before. It's already been synchronized. If we select this, you can see here now, you edit all of your text. And again, the animation that's on there, uh, it's using a Gaussian blur, one of our native effects right here for all of the text layers there. And you could modify and you can also see, you know, that there are there's responsive nature in here. OK, pretty cool, which you can disable or adjust or modify. Uh, let's go to something else. So maybe we'll go into some of our lower thirds. Now, again, you've got a lot of these. I'll show you some more in just a second on Adobe Stock. Uh, let's see, modern lower third, two lines. Okay, let's take a look at this one here. Drag it in, wind back. Again, I've also got that font. Go ahead and play this here. And it's a nice, clean, simple animation. All right. Oh, sorry, my camera's in the way there. That's not helping you. All right. Now, that may not be your style, okay? But once again, created in Premiere, you know, you have full editability of all of these elements here. So every part of it. And you can see here in the layer stack, you can see exactly what everything is, these brackets, our actual uh, clip graphic images, or they could actually be video. Um, real simple to modify, okay? Lastly here, let's go into something like, just to kind of show you some of the differences, I'll go into one of the news packages here, and let's go into one of these lower thirds. So these were created in After Effects. Now again, if you go back to last week's, and we'll talk about this more, these of course have way more flexibility. They're gonna have different types of animation, and a whole slew of different editable, modifiable fields. Now you can see right away, you've got this like spinning, rotating, 3D-ish globe. You've got a bunch of different elements there. And if we select this, you can see all the various editable things that you, editable options. So here's Adobe Stock. Um, again, many of you will be familiar uh, with the video content that we have available there. You'll notice up here under templates, you can also search directly here under templates. Now, if you go to the template section here, this is gonna show you all different types of templates, um, as well as the ability to access specifically some of our motion graphics ones. And these are really front and center right here. So if you say search on motion graphics, this is going to take you right there um, where you can now see that you have hundreds and hundreds in various subcategories. Now, there are also various prices. So if you just wanna look at free ones, 
Actually, you can simply select the single dollar sign here, and that will show you all of the free content. And as you hover over them, you'll see that you can just get a, a real-time preview of what they're going to look like. So this one here, this is actually really cool. I kind of like that. Click on there to get more info. This is by Wavebreak Media. Three pre-built style options to choose from. So it's a three-in-one. Um, includes lower third options. Easily change colors. Super cool. I like this. Let's go ahead and license this to our library. Just like that. All right. Saved. Done. Let's go ahead and move through these. Again, we've got lots of different ones here. These were, look like these were created in After Effects. Maybe I want this one here. Uh, this one's kind of cool. Again, a lot of very network sports type uh, motion graphics templates. Really useful. You get the idea here. Uh, again, we can search on different categories. So if we're just looking for, say, titles and text overlays. Okay, now we're still looking at only the free ones. If we look at free and paid, um, this gives you even more. All right. And again, click inside to get more detail. This was created by Nicholas. 1999. You can see that these are responsive, of course. Okay, automatically resizes to fit text. Built in custom easing delivers professional results. These are in 1080p, six seconds in duration. Okay, here's a cool one. Obviously, this one's got some video contained in it, right? And some very cool sort of 3D stuff built in After Effects, no doubt. You can actually see how big it is. A photorealistic title treatment with moving clouds, day and night settings, and camera tracking. Really cool stuff in three different styles. So you've got sliders that are going to allow you to choose between that sort of sunrise, sunset. You can license these directly. This is also Wavebreak Media. All right. So let's go back to the free ones just for a second here. I'll go ahead and grab a couple more. So the show title. Let's go ahead and grab this one. All right. I'll license it to my library. Cool. And let's go back to Premiere. So now when we go into libraries, and again, if we go into our motion graphics templates, uh, they are the ones that we just downloaded. Sliding borders, bright 3D show. So again, let's go ahead and drag this in. Perfect. Was hoping this would happen. Resolve fonts. This is why, as I say, you'll never have to worry about motion graphics templates in Adobe Stock having something that you can't access. I don't have the program OT bold book or medium font. Guess what? I can resolve that problem by synchronizing them directly from Typekit. Boom. Done. So now this template will have the proper text, the proper look, and uh, I don't have to stress. Okay, oh, sorry. Here, let me turn down the music there. Sorry, that was annoying. All right. Go ahead and play that back. Cool. All right. Once again, if we go into Essential Graphics here, so you can see we've got, it looks like, three different animation styles. That one's kind of cool. It's got some blur on it. Wind back on this. Pretty sweet. Ooh, that's real nice. Like that. Okay. Here's a different one. Okay. Wind back again. Pretty cool. I think I like that second one the best. Okay. So once again, this could be Jason Levine. Here, maybe we'll just make this Alaska. Jason's journey. Mondays, 5 p.m. <laughs> All right. And you can see they've given us options for text color modification, frame color. That's interesting. So yeah, we can, I see, lower third, main controls. Oh, there's your scaling. Okay. So you can scale the whole thing up or down. That's very nice. Text controls, text scale as well. So again, when my text wasn't fitting before, I should have known they'd have a text scale in there. Here's how you can modify that. Look at all this stuff. It's all editable. The frame controls, the opacity, the width. Um, so easy and built. And this was free. Oh, look, it even flies off. Nice. Super cool. Let's try another one. All right, this is uh, one from Andrew Kramer. Okay, oh, it's still, it's still caching here. Give it a second. Okay, there we go. All right. So 
don't mind my my machine. Something weird is happening. Okay, this is an Andrew Kramer one. We all know him as Video Copilot. So again, Jason on stream. Glitches happen. <laughs> or maybe we could say, what's up, glitches? Is that funny? Uh, all right. And this one here, you've got color and lights, fog color, light color, tagline scale, main title scale. He's got some video playing there. Enable top lights, enable bottom lights. You know, really cool stuff. This was built by Video Copilot. This one is also free. This, by the way, is also part of our Master Artist Collection. So you're going to find a lot of free ones in here as well, including, I mentioned Andrew Kramer. I talked about this at Max, Valentina V., uh, Brian Maffitt, Nick Hill, countless others. So there's some really beautiful ones in the Master Artist Collection and so many good free ones. I mean, if you think about the time involved in building these manually in After Effects and the fact that so many of these are free, you should just start downloading. Just, just start downloading these things. Just start using them, all right? Really simple, really cool. Thank you so much for joining me, and we'll see you again next time. Thank you. Take care. Bye.